All right, guys, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite graffiti books, and it is Graffiti Alphabets. So today I'm going to be breaking down this book, and I'm going to go through several different sections in this video. First of all, I'm going to talk about like the cover and the details, kind of like the details and uh, description of the book itself. And then I'm going to go into kind of the structure, how this book is built up, what are the different uh, chunks and chapters, if you will, of how everything is set up in the book. Then I'm gonna say, give you a, a quick rundown of why, why I love this book and why I think it's such a, a good book to have, even a good book to gift, even though it's been around for a while. This book was uh, originally created in 2011, so it's been around for about 11 years now, but uh, the style doesn't die. There's, there's still so much value in this book, and I'll get into that later. And then at the end, I'm going to give you my top 10 uh, entries in this book because it's broken up to uh, with a bunch of different artists, and I want to show you, give you a sneak peek of the top 10 that I enjoy. So stick around to the end to see that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the whole book. As you can see, the front has many different styles, many different colors that pop in contrast on the outside. And then on the binder, it's just about the same. Graffiti alphabets. You flip to the back, here's some of the interesting statistics. It's got a, 154 artists and uh, it goes from all over the world, 30 different countries. And it gives you a kind of a sneak peek of some of the artists that are right there. Now, first of all, some of you um, let's say in the UK, might recognize this book, but notice it says street fonts. Now, just in the UK, they released a version called street fonts. So we look at the copyright here, right here, the, this paperback was in 2018, but published in the UK, the title street fonts. It's the same book, but just for some reason, it was street fonts in the UK. So that wraps up the covers and the details of like the book and kind of uh, what you would see if you found this on the bookshelf. Now let's go into kind of the structure. Now it is actually a pretty straightforward book. It's got the first couple pages kind of introducing the title pages. 400 illustrations. It's 154 different artists but there's a uh, over 400 uh, pictures in this book. Now, this is all it is, really. There's a quick introduction, and if you want to take a pause of this page, here are all the artists that are on each and every page of this book. Now, I know this would be helpful for those on the fence of whether or not they want to buy this book. Um, as you can probably hint that uh, I would suggest buying it because I think it has a lot of value still. And then introductions right here. But then here's an example of what one of the artists looks like. They have an alphabet that they have created, some other examples of their work, and a quick little blurb about their website, where they're from, what kind of group they're in, all that kind of stuff. And it will go on just like that, all the way to the end for each and every one of these artists. Before I show you my top 10 of this book, I wanna give you a couple of reasons why I think this is a great book. Now, there, a critic might say that uh, getting, this kind of, getting this book that just has alphabets of different artists isn't any better than going on Instagram. And you know what? That's a very good critique because Instagram has an enormous wealth of like uh, of artists of different graffiti alphabets that are out there. But the one thing that this this provides is this is a kind of a a curated list. Like Claudia Wald got all of these artists with 154 artists, like. There are many artists in here that you would not stumble across in Instagram. Instagram has this, it, you know, it has the algorithm, right? The algorithm that will pop up whatever artist they think that you're gonna, uh, that you're gonna connect with, that you're gonna uh, participate in. 
but uh, this book will expose you to artists that you didn't even know exist, the styles that you didn't even know exist, because this is not just basic uh, wild style or straight letters. They have illustrations uh, and uh, kind of computer graphic illustration letters as opposed to just uh, stuff that you would throw on the wall. So I think that it has a lot of value. And also like one of the things about having uh, uh, a book is that uh, it you have the art with you all the time. And one of my biggest uh, critiques about uh, Instagram is even though I follow an enormous amount of artists across the world, if I find something that they like, that they something that I'm really attracted to, I can always give them a like, you know, give them that double tap. But largely, like, I can't, there's not a good way to like store the ones that I think I like. There's that little bookmark saved icon. But even then, like, it's a little off to the side. It's not as easy to, to keep track of. And you're still scrolling on your phone. You don't get the nice book and being able to flip through pages of a book. And this, and having a book also is a good exposure to, uh, you can draw inspiration from people that you just like aren't normally used to looking at or scrolling through an Instagram. Okay, let's go ahead and look at my top 10 from this book to give you a hint of what kind of content you can find in this book. Let's go ahead and find the tabs. Boop. All right, let's dive into it. This first guy right here, Adam One. Now, if anyone's been on my channel for a while, I am more drawn to more straight letters that just have nice little style to them. Very legible, very clean. The white and red are on point. He is from Germany, and there's a quick little blurb about him. Next one, ooh, this next one is a treat. Right here we have Does, and if anyone's been on the internet for a while, Digital Does is one of the most amazing artists I've seen. But this style is much different than what he does nowadays. So if you go to digitaldoes.com, you can find some of his latest work and it's just like, it has such a unique and very stylized style, if you will. But uh, this is what it was in 2011 when this book was released. And I think it's just a nice capture, nice little snapshot in time of his style back then. And what I love about this is, I love that letters don't have to stay in a, in a box. I feel like him blowing them up all different sizes the Z is huge compared to like this little D, that if you just have things spilling over, even just rolling off the sides of the page or whatever uh, wall you're on, I feel like that has a, a great style to it. He is from Australia. I love this one, Clark Kent. Uh, Red Hulk is uh, a dope uh, figure to have in this. And I love that his alphabet had every single letter in a different style. So I feel like it's an artist with many different talents and uh, showing them in the alphabet, which I think is great. Ooh, this was nice. Uh, Lay Atlas, is that how you pronounce it? I'm not sure, from France. But his alphabet is a is a labyrinth. I mean, that's the, that's the style that they say that uh, that he is uh, known for, but it's like a maze, but it's clearly an alphabet. Just the way it's all put together, very symmetrical, very well spaced and digital. And even his pieces are just perfect using rollers and yeah, it's great. All right, let's go to six. Rocket from Greece. Now I loved this one too, because this is another example of just trying a bunch of different styles for each section of the alphabet. Um, I think he repeats A, B, C, D, E before he goes to F, so he has two rows of that, but love it. I love how everything's put together and all the different styles, kind of flexing your versatility. Versatility? Flexing your versatility. Ooh. Slider from Germany. 
Now, this I thought was very unique, is that it kind of used these engineering docs for each and every letter to make it seem like they were sketched out to be built in a fabrication plant or something. It's really interesting. It's something that I could really just sit down and like look at for a long time. You know, just stare at a graffiti book versus actually doing work for my job. All right, now let's go to Sweat. Okay, this one popped out at me because these are all individual pictures of letters. And if you read this blurb here, if you want to pause it, you can if you want, I don't care, is that uh, before he went to work, he just hit up a bunch of places and did the whole alphabet in different spots that he knows, went through the whole alphabet, and then went to work. Like, like all of these letters can stand alone as their own piece, but like, for this book, he did it all in one morning, which I think was pretty, pretty wild. I love this because it doesn't even seem like a proper graffiti alphabet, but it does have like these highly stylized, almost like futuristic uh, letter structures. Like these, these look like buildings in a video game, almost. Zeds from the Amsterdam. Yeah, love it, absolutely love it. Let's do the last one. And this one, Tilt. This one's another unique one, is it um, using, what is? what did he use? It looks like stained glass, but he didn't use uh, glass in this. Plexiglass, he used plexiglass and put it in a frame to make this alphabet. And the alphabet's not even full, but just like using a different medium versus just like paint. So there it was a good example of what's in this book. There, so since I only showed you 10, there's another 144 artists that you may be interested in watching or taking a look at. So I don't feel like this is a huge buy, like 30 or 40 US dollars, I do believe. I'm not sure what I spent on it. I just remember seeing this right there. Um, 35, I think it's worth it because it's something that you can take a look at. You can just put on your coffee table and when you're bored talking to your your in-laws, then you can just take a look at it. And uh, that's not as rude as sitting there on your phone versus like actually looking at a book. Having art around your house in the form of this book, I feel like it's always worth the money. But if you stuck around to the end of this review, thank you. Stick around for some more and let me know if there's any other books I should take a look at. But I think you should buy this, and thanks for thanks for watching, guys. Love you.